What's up, guys? Welcome to the ABNC show. My name is Zane, uh, and I'm always joined by Josh Sharp. Josh, how you doing, man? Dude, I am chilling, bro. I finally got my phone fixed. Um, um, I got some Sprite, and we're good. We're good. It's a and good day. Joining us today uh, from last episode, Alex Batts. Alex, how you doing, man? Pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I'm chilling. This is actually my second podcast recording this evening about Endgame. So, oh, boy. Uh, Hope, yeah. we, we, hope we didn't exhaust it but in a, with a movie like endgame we hope like it's impossible oh, to exhaust a... everything it's impossible oh yeah i can always talk about this movie some more so do whatever it takes <laughs> all right so but before we get into the big fucking endgame spoiler discussion a little piece of uh news dropped uh, a couple hours before we're recording this uh i'm gonna botch this name so does anyone know how to say it properly I I actually have I actually don't know how to say. It. I know it's like I, mean, I can I can say his his first name. His first name is fucking fucking David. That's about it. Everybody can say his first name. <laughs> David gonna, David Dast Malchian. Dast Malchian is what I'm going to assume. I'm sorry if we mispronounced that. Uh, he's going to be playing Polka Dot Man in the, the Suicide Squad. Uh, interesting. I so yeah. yeah. I'd say, uh, well, actually, to be honest with you, I think it's kind of a perfect casting. It is. Which, I don't weird, know. It, which is weird when you say, when you talk about him, because he's not necessarily a, like, prolific, well-known actor. Right. But just just based off of his other roles and the kind of, uh, I guess, like, the way he carries himself in those movies, on like, like Dark Knight, uh, Ant-Man... Um, I haven't seen Ant Man in the I haven't seen Ant Man in the Wasp. Uh, he was also been in Gotham. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the man, the dude, huh? The Flash. He was in the Flash. Yeah, he was in the Flash too. Yeah, the dude's legit been on both sides of the of the spectrum. <laughs> yeah, both sides of the spectrum. And I mean, like, of course, I'm gonna be a little bit biased and say that all his DC stuff is better than his Marvel stuff. Um, only because like his Marvel stuff, he comes across it's like super like jokey and it's comedic. Uh, yeah, it's comedic stuff, and I'm just like, nah. Like, I like, I like the little roles he's had in the DC, mm -hmm. the the various DC uh, like shows and like TV and like movies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't really actually know a whole lot about Polka Dot Man except for the fact that he can like take the polka dots off of his uniform and use them as weapons, <laughs> like so, like so, like bombs and like traps and like shit like that. Right. Um, I mentioned this on my page today. I was just like, "How are you gonna have Polka Dot Man and not have Condiment King? Like, if you're gonna have a, if you're gonna have a fucking goofy, gimmicky character, just I, fucking give it to like the best one. Like, have the best one in the in the movie. I love, I love me some Condiment King, dude. He's just so, yeah. he's just he's so you, stupid, but he's so. You've been cool. championing this, championing this for like since day one, pretty much. Condiment King. Yes, <laughs> dude. Hell yeah, I love Condiment. Do you not love who 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 doesn't love Condiment King? I mean, the odds are better. Now, since James Gunn's the one that's doing it, he might make a cameo. Dude, I I would be the happiest person in that theater, man. And if, Endgame is the only movie to ever make me jump out of my seat. But like, I'm pretty oh. sure if I saw a live action Condiment King, I I I'd lose my shit. Alex, what's your what's your takeaway on this? Uh, I mean, not too much, honestly. I still, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm not very excited for this movie. Uh. I don't know a whole lot about Polka Dot Man. Honestly, my knowledge is about as extensive as what Josh just described. Um, I think it's pretty cool that we're getting some wacky and like out there uh, characters on the big screen. I mean, I'm always down for that, so that's nice. And James um, Gunn actually put out a post today. I think it was on his Instagram, like showing off like all the Suicide Squad Suicide Squad runs he's had, uh, and they're very much from like the John Ostrander run, and it's like all that like you know goofy you know not goofy but like more vibrant suicide squad roster and yeah so i'm i'm all for it uh yeah this was literally just like kind of out of the blue today literally the only thing we were gonna we're supposed to talk about was endgame just a little something to whet our whistle yeah just a little something because let's get into it boys we're not doing a little non-spoiler thing this movie made 1.2 billion dollars already I think it's safe to say that a majority of people who are going to be watching slash listening to this have already seen probably the biggest movie of all time. That is, uh, of course, Avengers Endgame. Let's oh get into oh, it. Oh, 
Shit, who yeah, wants boy. to go first? Who wants to go first? Uh, you know what? You go first. You never start. <laughs> I never start. Okay. This, th- this, there's no question. This is probably the best Marvel movie yet. I, th- I think so. You know, I got teary eyed like three different times in the movie. Uh, one of which was Black Widow's sacrifice, Josh. Uh, I know you don't. <laughs> <laughs> one of which was that. Uh, I was completely thrown off guard by what the story of the movie was going to be. How, like, the time travel was going to work. Like, I was just, like, I was, like, thinking, oh, if they do time travel, it's going to be, like, you know, the uh, explanation that they kind of made fun of in the movie. Like, with that grandfather paradox. No, this is, like, like an act- how an actual physicist portrays time travel in a way. So they kind of, in a, in a movie about, like, a talking raccoon and all that, they kind of had, had some realism in it in a way Mm -hmm. but it like this was like unlike any other marvel movie like to date like a lot of them have action really there's not a lot of action until like the last hour if you really think about it other than some moments like captain america versus captain america which was fucking awesome oh yeah dude yeah i I love i love that sequence so good and then really at the beginning when they're trying to go to thanos uh, I don't know if you'd count that as an action scene, but really, there's not a whole ton of action except for that last hour. And this movie, yeah, but yeah, you basically, basically, you basically, you're saying there, there aren't a whole lot of set pieces. Yeah, there's not a whole, but it's more, you know, it just feels like a personal, feels like a personal journey in a way. Like this is very mm-hmm. much a conclusion to the original six Avengers, more so than others, obviously. Um, but you know, I, it was great. Like I don't. Like, I, I don't know what else to say. Like, I'm sure we're going to touch on every little moment like that made us go ah, or something like that. Mm-hmm. But there, there's one in particular. The biggest pop wasn't the Avengers Assemble. We all know the biggest pop. I, I think I don't, I don't know how it was for you guys when freaking you see Mjolnir, hit, Mjolnir hitting <laughs> Thanos and then you think it's coming to Thor. But it just zooms past Thor and Thanos and Captain America just fucking grabs it. Yeah. Do legit like that? I threw my hands in the air and jumped out of my seat. I was like, "Yes!" Because like so I perfect. like I, that was the one thing. Because I think I mentioned it last week or something or the week before. I was just like, "I want to see him wield Mjolnir." And you guys, were, I think either it was you, Zayn, or somebody. Someone was just like, "Yeah, no, they're not going to do that." Yeah, because no, just we like, just Dude. we totally knew that we thought that you know Mjolnir's destroyed, but you know I didn't expect Thor to grab it from that timeline. From the 2013 I was, timeline, I was like, "Yo, well, actually, I don't think I said. I don't think I. I just well, actually, you know, I did say. I said, I said Thor's hammer. Okay, yeah. I, I, I. That was the one thing that I really wanted to see because I think, yeah, because mm-hmm. we were talking about like expectations and things like that and things that right. we want to see. And yeah, I mean, I. Oh man, like I so wish good. I, I wish I could go back and experience that moment for the first time over and over. And it over was and so over shocking, again. and you knew. They were this. This was something they had in their minds because Thor. Thor's reply is great. He says, "I knew it." Like, he, like harkening back to when he budgeted a little bit in Age of Ultron. Like, yeah. and there was that shot uh, that was on your timeline actually that I fucking loved when with Captain oh, America mm-hmm. with the half broken shield. It's just one man standing up against uh, Thanos's fucking army at the Avengers compound. The entire oh. yeah yeah dude that like that shot even though I know like th- that was mostly VFX that it was beautiful such a beautiful shot <laughs> oh, it was so good and then you know every like I'm so happy Cap finally got some more screen time in this one compared to Infinity War like this this very much felt like Cap and Tony's movie not just you know not just an Avengers but even though this was yeah this was an Avengers movie but at the heart of it it was Cap and Tony's story and yeah it was like. It was so good, like from beginning to end. Like, if you've been invested in this franchise since the beginning, this is this was just a giant thank you to the fans from Marvel. Like, literally, this is unprecedented. That yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I was I was was gonna say just pretty much anyone who is anyone in the MCU was in this was in this movie. Like fucking the ancient one. Alexander Pierce. Yeah, Alexander the callback, Pierce the callback to like I thought when Captain America got in that elevator, I thought it was gonna be an uh, ultimate throwback to the Winter Soldier, but it wasn't. Yep. It wasn't. But I still loved where it went. With yeah, the, yeah, it, it just ended <laughs> ended up being a uh, a little uh, nod. Like a nod to, what was the what was that comic called again? I think Alex? it was uh, Secret Empire. 
Secret, Secret Empire, Empire, where he was just like, or he Hail Hydra. Was in Hail Hydra. I was just like, yo, I was That's like, so... yo. Because you had you had Rumlo there, you had like you had the same exact people except for like that agent dude, the the bald agent dude from the Winter Soldier elevator scene. I was like, oh shit, this is about to happen again. You, you want to know something that I noticed? Um, I forget his name, but the guy who played KG Beast in Batman v Superman yeah. was actually a, a Hydra agent. I didn't know that. I was yeah, like, he oh was, hey, he was in the Winter Soldier. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, oh look, it's a uh, Anatoly Kanaizo. Kanaizo. Yeah, Kanaizo. Yeah. I was just like, that's uh, cool. And then we got Fat Thor, Professor Hulk. Like, really? I... All right, ho- all right, hold on. Okay, you know what? Let let let's just go into it. And because I, I, everyone that I've spoken to, like, including Alex, this has been like the one thing people didn't like. I do not like what they did with Thor in this movie. Fat Thor. Yeah, I don't. I I understand what they were trying to do. Like he was, you know, he was kind of just in like a really low spot because he felt like he failed. He felt like he had an opportunity to kill Thanos and and stop everything from happening, and he didn't do it mm-hmm. uh and then you know once the second chance that they got to to get him the stones were gone already because thanos used the stones to destroy the stones mm-hmm. um and like i like i get it i get why they did it but like he was a joke he was basically the same thor that was in fucking uh ragnarok and i don't like ragnarok because of what they did to thor in that movie he turned they turned him into just like comedic relief and that i just when i think of thor i don't think of jokes just, just, that's just I mean, me. I mean, I didn't mind it. Uh, I uh, a bunch of my friends that I went with opening night. They're like, "Yeah, I love the movie," but Thor was fat the entire way through. Like, I thought he would get like I. I personally also thought like the the fat Thor bit would end once Thor grabbed Mjolnir and Stormbreaker right before they're about to uh, go fight Thanos. Like, I thought that's when it was all gonna go away when he got. No, nope, he's just in his suit, fat as fuck. <laughs> he's in his suit, fat as fuck. By the way. That Trinity fight uh, was fucking awesome. Before, right before um, everybody comes in through the portals, like that, tr- the oh, fight yeah. with Thor. Like it, re- like a lot of people always ask. Thanos is pretty, you know, useless without the Infinity Stones. This movie yeah. goes out of its way to show that Thanos is powerful with or without the Infinity Stones. And I, I found, I found him to be a lot more aggressive in this movie than he was in Infinity War. Because yeah. of course, you know, he with in, in Infinity War, he can kind of just use the the stones and kind of and kind of sort of hang back a little bit, unless they mm-hmm. actually bring the fight, uh, you know, to close quarters. But, but like yeah. he, like I, that blade, dude, he was like, I think uh, he was like going specifically after Captain America. This was after, um, after he grabbed Mjolnir and he was fighting. Like, like mm-hmm. I was genuinely scared that he was going to stab and kill Captain America. Like, I was just like, dude, he is angry. Like, he, he was kept aggressive. smashing that shield. Like, duh. Uh, uh. I was like, yeah. Oh my so, God. okay. So, is what is what was his his weapon made out of? Because I mean, I'm like, I'm yeah, guessing that, some sort of like. It so must be nth metal. Oh my God. Yeah, because uh, uh, also in Infinity War, when I was watching Infinity War, I remembered Vision was made out of vibranium. So, how was one of the members of the black order able to stab him that's uh I was, yeah, yeah well then again also thanos dug his big ass fucking purple sausages in his head to grab the that, mind that, stone or, that's yeah, true or so, the soul stone so and then the mind stone god damn it yeah. yeah but um so they're like i don't know if maybe you know there's weapons out there maybe vibranium is just the strongest metal on earth that earth has ever seen and maybe like where thanos is from they've made i don't know stronger yeah, that's what it's described as. It's the, yes. the strongest thing on Earth. Um, it's fun. It was funny, Josh. Actually, you mentioned like Thanos being more aggressive in this mm-hmm. compared to his Infinity War part. Because I was actually um, watching mm-hmm. Infinity War with the director's commentary on yesterday. It's so good. That commentary is awesome. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. But um, the Russos were actually talking about how once Thanos gets the stones in the like the second stone in his possession in the movie, they're like, yeah, he doesn't really bother with actually dealing with anyone like himself mm-hmm. like like he's this... kind of just above that <coughs> at this point like he doesn't need to and so he doesn't and so this you know obviously he he hasn't had any of them and so he's just wrecking shit like this yeah, well, this was terrifying. more of a aggressive thanos because not oh, this technically this was the thanos from 2014 uh, so i feel like infinity wars thanos was more philosophical in his approach to things because of his journey his personal journey that we saw in infinity war and because this was a little bit of a younger thanos by like three four years this was much more of an aggressive like ethos thanos like it was like yeah it was more of like a warrior thanos yeah warrior calculated like yeah like it was completely on a different level especially like 
you know, a lot of people wanted like Hulk and Thanos like round two, but the feeling that I got from Infinity War. He would have got us to ask him yeah, again. Yeah, to, because the way I perceived it, the first, the reason why Hulk lost the first time and would lose against Thanos, like, at least in the movies, Thanos is a calculated fighter. Hulk is just rage. So like, like when you when you had that fight, that awesome fight, by the way, between Captain Marvel and Thanos, Thanos acts quickly to grab that power stone, puts it in his other hand, and just punches her with it. Mm-hmm. So he 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 yeah. think like he's stra- he's a strategic fighter, and Hulk is just all rage, and that's why Hulk did lose in that first fight. So, oh, well, it's funny because I correct me if I'm wrong, but I, didn't the Russos actually say that Hulk was going to get another opportunity at that Thanos? Because I could have sworn uh, I do remember that that like being a, like like a huge thing that people were talking about, like oh yeah, you know we're gonna I get. Really, honestly. I I I yeah, feel I like I remember. So. I don't remember to be honest. That. I had a a comment that I wanted to comment before we get too far from it, mm-hmm. um, but on Thor, um, yeah, I'm with you, Josh. I don't really like Thor in this that much. I like like I like the concept of Thor being you know broken and wallowing wallowing in his own self pity and things like that. On mm-hmm. paper, it's great, but yeah, I don't like that he's just played for laughs here. Like I wish that they would have gone with a dramatic angle for it and explored it more. Like the scene that he has in Infinity War with Rocket, right? Yeah, that one, yeah. and then I feel like also, yeah, the scene with his mother was pretty powerful too. When yeah, that's what I was gonna like. That's a good scene. That's a mm-hmm. great scene. I wish they would have done that more. Mm-hmm. Like or or of... like or like if you're gonna keep him like comedic or whatever, allow that to be the moment where he decides to become serious again. That's the talk with his mother because that's what I thought they were gonna do. I was like, all right, he's got Mjolnir back. He's he's talked to his mother. She's kind of helping him get through things. And I was like, all right, now he's gonna become the Thor of old or the Thor that we that we're used to seeing. Mm-hmm. Nope. Just more back to say, fucking fucking uh, Big Lebowski references. <laughs> yeah, dude. I will say though, I like his Viking hair after he. Yeah, I liked uh, his hair and his beard. Oh yeah, like the way like in his, the final battle. Yeah, right. like his beard is like all like all, like braided and shit. Like yeah, I thought that was really I thought that was a really good look. But then yeah. it does like there's like a wide shot of him walking towards the stairs, and I'm like, and there's the good. <laughs> yeah, there's the beer belly. Uh, you, uh, I don't know what you guys. What you? By guys the way, we're of? not fat shaming, but no, like, we're not. I don't we're want not. anyone we're to not. think that we're, that we're doing that. Like, I was just. It's just a simple. It's just an observation. Direction, questionable director's choice. Sure, and with them in a movie with like five hundred million different characters, you know, it's kind of hard to make all of them perfect. Yeah. So uh, I, also, I do. I, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say my other. Really, these are my only like two complaints with the movie, or like Thor, and then. I also like. I'm iffy on Hulk. I really liked Hulk in this movie. I'm I like the only one. It's it's again the thing where like I like the concept. I love the idea of Hulk having more control over you know Hulk and like mixing the brain and the brawn. But mm-hmm. again, I feel like they play it too much for laughs here instead of actually like exploring it more and what that could mean. And I also I don't know if I'm alone in this. I think that his CGI overall looks worse than it did in 2012, which just boggles my mind. Like I think his face looks super I, weird. I completely it, disagree on that. The the CGI. I, I thought I, the CGI I, really looked good on him. I thought I, I yeah I actually thought the CGI on his face was wasn't wasn't bad. Yeah, like, I thought it was I, really I good. Face, I think it's good CGI. I just think it looks too much like Ruffalo for me. And I think that was no, that. That's kind of okay, what I, I okay. that's what I was kind of thinking that it was going to be when you when you said yeah, I merged the two. Yeah, it's kind of like a mixture between the two. It's like I always like hoped it, if they ever like since they merged, I would assume it would look more like Ruffalo than it would Hulk. So, yeah, like, I just I, th- just, I thought to overall me, it looked fine it, to me. It to me, it just looks like Mark Ruffalo's face is like shrunk. Superimposed on the Hulk's yeah. body. Like, it, I don't know. It throws me off. Like, it's good CGI. I just I just don't like the direction of it. Right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, that's, I guess, I mean, that's all but, about preference, really. Because funny, because yeah. I, I mean, you mentioned that in, in the spoiler chat that we had. And, like, yeah. I, when I went to the movie yesterday, I deliberately, like, looked for it. I was just like, yeah, I was like, I don't really see. I don't really see. Yeah, like, they put, like, really fine. Like, the VFX in this movie are fantastic. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I think there might be, like. What was the budget of this movie, man? Because, like, was, like. like it was like four hundred to five hundred million. Because yeah. like if you like if you look at how many actors that they de aged in this movie, like oh my they God, so many. Uh, Michael yeah, Douglas, Michael Douglas, uh, Stan Lee. Stan they, Stan uh, Lee. They, uh, uh, I forget the guy's name who plays Howard, Howard Stark. They, they, they um. I don't they, think they had uh, to de age him though. They, he just. Oh kinda... no! But, uh, well, I mean, 
I think they did. I don't think because so, he kind of looks before. like he's. You know, I don't. He, yeah, I don't know actually. Uh-huh. I feel like he just looks like them. Probably they just added makeup to it. I, mean, I also it'd find before, it it'd be before Tony was born, so they'd have to a little bit. Maybe I find oh, it, that's true. I find it like super interesting that that Howard Stark looked one way in uh in was it I know Iron Man two, and then like they like changed actors or something like that. Oh yeah, but no, yeah. because no, they changed actors for Captain America: The First Avenger because that was much earlier than. No, 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 no! I know that. I know, oh. I know that. But I'm talking about the. Maybe or maybe I'm thinking of the thinking of somebody else. Because uh, the only time that Howard Stark has changed actors was for the first Captain America. Other than that, it's been the same actor since Iron Man two, then in Civil War or yeah, then in Civil War, and so on and so forth. Like in he's played the same. He's been Howard Stark since then. Okay, never, never mind. I don't know they, why. Like I've, they I've, changed I've, makeup I've, and all that. Like I haven't I, mean, I haven't seen Iron Man two in a really long time, and I thought uh, that they had a different actor for for him. Uh, Okay, never, never mind. Carry yeah, on. No, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same <laughs> actor. Uh, I'm trying to think what else and, and like what else to back. So I'll, I'll let you guys go. Uh, whoever wants to go next. Um, you mentioned the uh, the the, uh, the Black Widow thing. Like, oh, am I, I the only one that like kind of laughed during that scene? That they're like, oh, hey, no, I want to commit suicide. No, wait, I want to commit. No, suicide. I thought like, it was pretty powerful because considering where those characters, how how deep hawkeye and black widow are like they they've had a relationship longer than we've seen clearly uh and there's more to be explored for sure but uh i just thought it was pretty powerful when they were just trying to like like they they thought different things that clint thought he was gonna go but black widow had a different idea and i i got really teary-eyed when uh uh he said uh say hi to my family for me and then she said you tell him yourself and then, like, when they were having that conversation on the cliff right before she lets go, it was so sad. And, like, whatever you think of Hawkeye, Jeremy Renner really plays that scene damn well. Like, it was it, it was so good. I, I, I ate it all up. <laughs> I, I I do I do like uh I do like Hawkeye now like the movie has made me a Hawkeye fan but that like that scene at the lake I don't know why just the lines that Jeremy Renner kind of the way they're, that they're delivered I just wasn't really oh, a fan oh the ones that like, oh, I like that was like you he was like you uh you uh put the suit on and you go there and you talk to him and I was just like ah that that line did not come out very well like I, that was just me like I kind of I kind of cringed a little bit oh, I, I didn't cringe like, that much. Like, cause like I could tell like he was trying to like bring forth some emotion, but like I just wasn't feeling it. Like, say, like I said, like, I didn't. I felt nothing during <laughs> during that scene on Vormir. Like when she died, I literally it was just like, "Damn, that sucks." <laughs> <laughs> Where's the next scene? Like I just, I've never. Anyone who knows me knows that I do not like Black Widow in the in in the MCU. Um, and I've 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 been calling for her death for so long, dude. Like, I was just like, I'm like, her and Hawkeye, at least in my opinion, uh, or, at least, or back when the first Avengers came out, I was just like, she's kind of, like, useless. Like, I just, I don't, I don't understand, like, why, I don't know, she was used so much. I, was, I just wasn't really a huge fan. It's not that I don't like Scarlett Johansson. I mean, I'm not stupid. <laughs> but like, but like, yeah. I don't but like, like Scarlett. The, I mean, I'm not, I don't like Scarlett Johansson. I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid, you know. Yeah. But like, yeah, I just, I don't, I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't teary eyed. I wasn't like, I wasn't choked up or anything like that. When she died, I was just like, oh well, that sucks. Alex, what's so your like? And so, but because of that mindset, because I feel that way towards that scene, I feel like somebody who I actually cared about should have gone. Like honestly, if that was, I care more about Nebula than I care about Black Widow. Dude. They did a really good job with Nebula in this movie. Like I didn't really care for Nebula in Nebula in the first Guardians, and I thought she was Nebula. Neb- Nebula. <laughs> I didn't care for her in the first Guardians. I thought she was okay in the second Guardians and Infinity War. Sure, but this one, like, I was like, okay, I I think I like Nebula this time because you you saw how much she changed like yeah. like that her character arc between Guardians and Endgame was mm-hmm. really I, I, to me I think it was really well done. Yeah, I think so too. Like I think you're not supposed to like her in the first Guardians obviously because she is kind of with Ronan. And the second one, I don't know, like I just thought I I thought in the second one she was just fine and I feel like she didn't have a lot to do in Infinity War obviously because like very little screen time was given to her. But like this well, time I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. 
no, 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 finish what you were saying. Yeah, so, but, like, they found a really good way, like, even from the beginning when she's interacting with Tony Stark when they're stuck in, sh- in space, like, even the small moments when he was offering her food, but she says, no, you take it, like, like that little gesture, I, I, I yeah. thought it was really nice. And it also, like, that big, the big twist when, like, the nebulas swap places in a way, like, the 2014 nebula goes to 2017. Like, I thought that was a very nice twist, uh, and it really, like... Like, all, the entire stuff with Nebula and Gamora, you know, like, Nebula trying to convince Gamora, hey, this is your path, don't don't follow it. Like, it, be, it kind of felt a little personal between the two, and, like, an arc that was building since the first Guardians, that continued in the second Guardians, something that was alluded to in Infinity War, and kind of, I feel, I feel like, kind of uh, concluded with, with this. I thought it was pretty sweet at the end. Yeah, I mean, I've been I've been a fan of Karen Gillan for for a while. I started watching Doctor Who around the time that she she joined, and plus she's like super attractive to me, so like I was just like, hey. But like, no, I I, I really I I really like Nebula in in then and, and kind of would have even though I, it would have sucked to see her die. I feel like if 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 at least for me, if you wanted to add some sort of emotion or some sort of weight to that scene, like yeah, like give me a character that I genuinely care about. But then again, obviously, not everyone has shares the same opinion about Black Widow as I do. So, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you were tearing up and shit, so I didn't. Clear, I didn't cry. I just care, got a little teary eyed. Clearly, you care about her more than I ever did. I think so. I no, like I think like they've just done a really good job establishing Black Widow in this universe, like especially with the with Captain America, the Winter Soldier. I feel that's where I really started to get like really like her in, in the role and like her storyline throughout. Um, and, and even in Age of Ultron, where I feel like a lot of people like don't like Black Widow in that movie for some reason, I I really found it like her arc in that movie pretty damn good. But I don't know; it's just like her arc throughout these movies have been pretty surprising to me. I I will say this though: I did in, I did like Black Widow in Endgame. Okay, like just kind of just kind just kind of seeing the softer side to her when it was just like her and Cap at the Avengers facility and they were sitting there right. talking. Like I loved that scene. I thought it was a really I thought it was a really well done scene. Uh, it, it was just, it was it was her with her guard down, which is something mm-hmm. that you you don't see with someone who's only known spy work and killing for the majority of their life. Um, but but yeah, I saw some people actually complain that that. Uh, that Captain Marvel wasn't in the movie a whole lot, and I was just oh, like, "Don't don't I'm, say that you're 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 about to you're about to like trigger a whole bunch of people here, Josh." Tr- no, like I I mean like I'm I'm kind of glad that this she wasn't in the movie a whole lot. Yeah, I'm no I, I'm I I saw her in Captain Marvel her actual yeah. solo film, and I just wasn't a fan. I like her a little bit more in this movie, maybe because she wasn't I'm on screen the whole time. Really but... happy what they did with in terms of they didn't make her the Superman in Justice League kind of thing where she right. literally just shows up and defeats Thanos in like the first it, like she, it almost it almost came to that too. it almost came to that and I was yeah. really worried but like it she was very much you know much needed firepower but she's not the one that resolves the conflict she does like, yeah I'm like yeah I'm like Thanos like punched her down the street so exactly like, I did like her haircut sort of... I did like oh, her yeah, haircut it's... Yeah, I like, I like yeah, the new she, costume and everything. Yeah, she she rocks a she rocks like a similar do in the in the comics now, right? Like a shorter like you yeah know. yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I, I I prefer that over the like long flowy hair stuff. Alex, did you get a chance to see Captain Marvel? And what, what did you think about her role in in this one in Endgame? Uh, yeah, I did see Captain Marvel. Uh, I actually liked Captain Marvel more than I thought I was going to. Same, she's good. Uh, I only have like a few minor complaints with it. Um. But I liked her in that. She was one of the big uh, things that I liked. Um, but yeah, I'm very uh, happy with her role in Endgame because, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think she had the right amount of screen time. Like she had some big moments and was a huge help. Like they would have lost without her for sure. For sure. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, she wasn't like the one to you know resolve everything, and and the focus wasn't really on her. Which I mean is good. It's not. Like she just showed up in the MCU, and like this movie is basically a celebration of what the MCU has been up until this point. Mm-hmm. And while she's definitely a part of that now and has been, um, you know, the focus isn't on her. And so I think it's appropriate the amount of of screen time that she gets. She gets um, the right amount, and and definitely her focus when it's needed. But she doesn't um, overtake anything. I don't think. Right. Right. Um, I. I- 
Oh, I'm sorry. What were you gonna say? I was gonna comment on the Black Widow stuff because I'm with Zane on the on the that scene. I really like that scene um, on Vormir, the, like sacrifice. And I actually, uh, I think one of the lines in the movie that hits me the hardest, uh, which is t- I totally didn't expect, but it's whenever um, Black Widow and Hawkeye are on their way there, like in the oh, I don't remember the name of the ship, the Benatar. Yeah. Yeah, whenever I, thought, I, thought, I thought that was the Milano. No, the Milano yeah, was destroyed no. in the first Guardian suit. Or uh yeah, yeah the first no, Guardians. But they got it they have another one. Yeah, the it's second the one most... is the Benatar since the end of the first oh, Guardians. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well anyways, um they're in that ship and um whenever he says uh we're a long way from Budapest. Like Oh yeah. I did like that. I actually I like, smiled when that went Yeah, that was a nice little moment. That hit me because I was like, damn, like I remember them talking about that in the first Avengers and like they were a long way from Budapest then. And like just thinking about all they've been through, like that that line hit me. I was like, that's that's a good line. Um, But yeah, so I liked Black Widow in this movie and and, in that scene. Actually, I was talking with um, Andrew about it earlier and uh, I hadn't really thought about it this way before, but it does actually kind of suck now thinking about the fact that like she's not in that Avengers assemble shot. Oh. She's not in the shot with the a force, like all the other female right. heroes. Like she's not there. Mm-hmm. Like I hadn't, re- I hadn't really thought about that. That does like, suck. That is, <laughs> that is kind of a bummer. Like she was the first one in the MCU and she's not there. She's not there. So yeah, that does suck. Um, but, but yeah, I, uh, Oh, sorry. Uh, I think someone was going to say something. Oh, uh, I was uh, going to, I was gonna say, because I, I want to talk about this this section of the movie because I've I've seen the more people that see it, the more I'm starting to see like a, like a kind of like change in everyone's feel about the whole the whole second act where they're going through the different timelines in the MCU and getting like the stones. Mm. I've seen a lot of people say that it just seems like really jumbled and just really all over the place. And I wanted to get your guys' opinion on that because I saw, like I said, I saw the movie again yesterday and I kind of started to get that feeling. Maybe it was because I was just looking more forward to, to seeing the third act again. And I was just kind of hoping things would rush along, but like, there are like some moments in that, in that, and mostly whenever it cuts to, to Thor and rocket, in Asgard, like I just feel like the movie just kind of slows down and gets like really just like not as good. Everything else is great, like the stuff that's the stuff on Morag and 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 all of the New York stuff. Like I really enjoyed, like kind of like seeing the different like perspective um, of the the New York battle. Like I loved all that stuff, but like it, like just that whole Asgard shit just just did not sit well with me. I really liked the second act. I I mean I think it was pretty unique. Uh, to have like the way they explain time travel in this movie, because that's what I thought. You know, they were gonna do the whole Back to the Future thing, where I, I don't know what it would, like would have been, but like you know, they explain like it's the it's not the grandfather paradox, where if you go back to kill your grandfather in the past, it doesn't prevent you from going away or something like that. They did a different type of uh, time travel. Tra- uh, time travel, uh, and sure, it might have been confusing at first, but I was on board with it, and I thought it was pretty unique, and I thought it was a nice homage to uh, homage. To like everything that's happened before and like even the asgard stuff i i ate up and i was like holy shit like what like this this just all feels earned in a way and like i feel like i, I don't know i just really dug it all like it gave like you said a whole new perspective of the new york battle uh like the, the fact that the ancient one was also there was yeah like, i thought that was a really cool addition like what, awesome. a, what a nice way to bring that back in a nice way to bring her back in i should say um and like it was just a nice scene when, uh, you know, Bruce tells her, you know, he gave it away and all that. He's like, and she's like, willingly, but like, why? And all that. It just, it just felt so like cool to watch. Like, I don't know. I just ate it all up. That, that second act, I, I love. I was just about, about, I was just about to ask a really stupid question. I was, I was about to be like, oh, how did the, because uh, when uh, Bruce was just like, oh yeah, I'm looking for, for uh, Dr. Strange. She's like, yeah, you're five years too early. I was just like, wait a second. How does she know the future? And then I realized that she's wearing the fucking time stone. And I was just like, yeah, never mind. Yeah. And also but, she she knows about she had well, yeah, she has a time stone. Yeah. Um I mean I really love the second act. I um I remember the first time like watching it because I, I you know had guessed that time travel would be used in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um and then but but whenever they started to actually like sit down and break down the like when and the where of where they were gonna get the different stones i was like oh holy shit like we're 
actually about to see them go back and do this. Mm -hmm. um, it was a time heist. Like, it was like a legitimate heist movie. Yeah, and then to to see them, I I, I also I love the way that they present time travel in this movie. A hundred percent. Yeah, I agree. It works. Like it really does. I've spent a lot of time thinking about it, and I mean, like, and I, I know it comes across as confusing at first. But, it definitely can, mm -hmm. and but, but like, there's articles that explain everything. Like, if you were confused, people would literally just Google what was the time travel shenanigans in Avengers Endgame. Like, and like the articles do a pretty good job. But I got it like the first moment. Yo, yeah, yo, I mean, Alex, yo, Alex, speaking of, hey, if you really do have it down, yo, in like in like two weeks or whatever, you might write an article for that. That could be that could be good. All right, bro, bet. I'll take, <laughs> Yay. I'll take. Um, but yeah, no, it's um, it it all works out. Like it all checks out. And I, I mean, I'm just like. I'm, personal life and stuff in general i i watch and study a lot of time travel stuff and then other things like that and mm -hmm. so like i got my head's got a pretty good understanding of like how a, a bunch of different time travel theories like would work and i like the direction they went to go with this one it allows them to do what they did and it's all still work out logically like i don't i haven't been able to find any plot holes in it um there was one that i had uh at first that i couldn't i couldn't figure out but our buddy Sean actually helped with that one. And it's to do with like Captain America. Um, which I guess. Yeah. We'll my, into. my, you know, yeah, yo, I'm sure we'll get there, but um, yeah, I just really dug the whole time heist scenario. And like, it made sense that Ant-Man was the one to help execute it. Cause he's the one that's pulled off a heist before. So, hey, yeah. hey, 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 speaking of Ant-Man, let's, let's, let's give it, let's give a shout out to that rat. Oh yeah. For, uh, the for... real hero of Avengers and yeah. that rat. Yeah. That yeah, without that rat, we would have like no movie. <laughs> but I really liked um, Ant Man in this movie. Like, I've, I've, I'll, I'll go on record. I love the Ant Man movies, Ant Man and Ant Man the Wasp. Uh, and I just think Paul Rudd's a freaking delight to watch. So seeing him with the with the Avengers, like, was was just, was just so fun to watch. I I like I smile every time he said a line in the movie. But yeah, yeah, no, he's he's fantastic. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I mean, I think the. I honestly didn't i was expecting the second act to be slower the second time i watched it actually because mm -hmm. i was like i knew i would want to get to the third act obviously oh yeah the third but, act is something we'll get there we'll get there's a third act but like it actually went by faster the second time i saw it and i didn't like i I didn't really feel any like pacing issues it the movie still somehow like it doesn't feel like three hours to me yeah it's I so it. weird like i honestly like yeah. i felt that the first time I, I watched endgame i thought it was two hours like i felt like it felt like it was two hours or something like that it, like it it, it, it moves like that it just goes yeah, and it goes just, and goes and even when it's crazy that it does that too because especially in the first act and then even in the second act too it has a lot of just straight up character scenes like mm -hmm. we talked about earlier like there's not a lot of action going on and like it, and it, it just, just feels so intense because you're you've watched these characters for 11 years now so like yeah. you, you like you needed that first hour of like just utter loss like the avengers have never experienced something like this before and to just see to get into the head of captain america to see what tony goes through in this movie where he has a daughter he's retired he's he retired on a farm which he said he would do in age of ultron like it, it was just the small moments like you could just see everybody was broken in a way and by the way i did not see tony having a daughter like i didn't see that coming like i thought that was a really nice angle well, they, they hinted at it in, at a, a infinity war before they hinted, yeah but i was just completely thrown up. yeah i was just completely thrown off by like he had a kid and like even though yeah they've hinted at it and all that i just didn't see it coming and you know yeah we'll, we'll get to the third act what what he does in the third act it was fucking awesome but i uh, I, I love i love what they did in the beginning with like him and and nebula on like the ship and like mm -hmm. you saw how how brittle and frail he was getting because oh my he's been yeah drifting in space like i because I, my i saw the movie in imax and i was just like first of all if you're gonna see endgame don't see it in standard you're doing yourself and the movie a disservice the movie was filmed with in completely yeah, with IMAX, imax cameras so this that... was this was the way the directors envisioned everyone seeing it so go see it in imax spend the extra money it's worth it but like um, yeah that that beginning scene with tony and steve just talking still kind of from the recovering from the fallout of civil war and tony obviously who had just got off the ship like you could just feel how tony is when he just rips off that arc reactor he says you if you find him you put that on and you hide and like the fact that he always said like guess what cap we lost you want to you want to know what you said when we uh we lost we do that together but you weren't there 
Like, it was just so powerful. Like, Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans were at their A game in this movie. Oh yeah, like that, like that scene, uh, well, the moment where they were talking and Cap was just like, he was like, he's like, has you know, has he given, like, did he give you like any kind of clues? You know, we need, we need you to tell us something. And Tony goes, and I, and he said, and we needed you. <laughs> oh, and it was, I was so just good. like, oh, I was like, it was Fuck. so good. Like, yeah, because I mean, like they didn't, they didn't interact at all in Infinity War. Uh, they were good. Cap he was, was about to call him, but he didn't. Yeah, Cap was in hiding. Um, when he, yeah, he, he basically was like they were, they, were, they were like doing some Secret Avengers type shit. Mm-hmm. Like like he was in he was kind of just like I mean he had he had to, he had to go off the grid after Civil War. Civil War, right? Um, because he was kind of a you know a fugitive. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you know Iron Man had his team when they were on um uh, Titan. Hell, Titan, yeah, when they, were, when they were on Titan, yeah, no, they didn't interact. So like I can definitely see where that animosity would would stem from of course you know all, all adding that on top to all the things that he found out about bucky and how cap hid the truth from him in civil war like as much as i don't like civil war like i like that 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 i, I like that aspect mm-hmm. um but yeah dude they oh man fucking they, love these smart dj dude i love their their banter back and forth too i just love captain america and iron man like as a whole and like Seeing their arc conclude in this movie was was just amazing, uh, you know, and especially that beginning scene when they're just talking in that room. You could just tell how devastated and scared and brittle, like not because of the the skinniness of him, but just the performance just carried through. It was just so, it just felt real. Like you actually like you're like oh my god, like this is nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh. I do want, you know, I have the Marvel Legends Infinity Gauntlet staring at me right there. I need a version of the Iron Man Infinity Gauntlet. Oh yeah, the The, Iron Gauntlet? Yeah, that that was awesome. Uh, I was uh, I was completely a little bit thrown off when Hulk was the one that made the snap. Like, did anybody see that coming? Uh, I mean, like, it it made sense in in a way, because obviously you know, he, he quote unquote wait no i don't know no, it doesn't actually no, i was a little bit surprised i feel like thor should have done that and like he was like really begging and i kind of wish they would have get they would have let him do it too yeah thor, thor like, was not in the best day. he's like just let me do something please just let me do this yeah, let me have like, this one because like, i don't because I, I don't think he would have fucked it up mm-hmm. i mean of course Thulk, uh, Thulk? i just said Thulk. 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 I, of course uh the hulk didn't didn't screw it up but i feel like kind of giving thor that redemption would have been really 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 beneficial for his character like i think that would have been nice to kind of give that to him like i understand like yeah hulk is just like oh yeah you know it's gotta be it's gotta be somebody who can handle a gamma radiation but yeah i'm like but thor's a demigod or just a straight-up god like like i i think he'd be able to 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 handle it but they were just like oh yeah no you're you're not you're not like in the in the right frame of mind to handle something of this magnitude and i feel like i feel like just them saying they just knocked him down even more i'm like come on man like shit let him do something but it's <laughs> fair enough yeah. but then uh, i did want to get i did not see this part coming before we talk about the wild third act i did not see this whole thanos storyline coming at all like i thought this was going to be the thanos from infinity war through and through nope he dies in the first 5 minutes the thanos oh, from infinity yeah. war <sighs> Dude, honestly, I was I was surprised that like they he jumped in and cut his arm off. I yeah, like, I was like, whoa! And then when Thor just like fucks like his head off, like I was like, it's, I was it's, like, it was funny thinking about like Thor chopping off his arm. Who you're just like, you totally could have done that. In but Infinity War too. but the thing is though, like in Infinity War, and if you listen to the Russo brothers commentary, if if you have not had the time, I would say do it. It's really interesting. They wanted. Thor to have a moment of revenge like they, they wanted Thor's revenge on Thanos like one last look on the eye of him is that's why yeah, he, he wants to gloat yeah yeah but um you know it just it was just so wild and you really got a sense of defeat when they killed him because he destroyed the stones and like what like and then they bring in the 2014 Thanos I was like oh shit and then we yeah. just, it was so wild and like when their plan to bring him in. I was like, okay, I was not seeing this coming at all. Like it was wild. Yeah, I, I, I thought, I thought that was a nice little. See, this is how you do subversions mm-hmm. in film. And That's really, the, the trailers really did not show anything. To be honest, 
Yeah, they like, they weren't kidding when they showed like the first twenty minutes of that movie. Mm-hmm. Of course, there were. Of course, when you got closer to the release of the, they film, were going to show it, some stuff. But they, to be fair, they did an amazing job marketing this movie. Like literally showing a shit, like very little. But uh, Thanos in this movie was fucking wild as hell. Yeah, like I, I, I saw some people say, "Oh, Thanos was better in Infinity War than he was in Endgame," and I honestly, I would say that they're kind of equal. Yeah, because this was more of an aggressive and a different Thanos. Like, yeah, and like you know, I ate it up, and I fucking because loved like it. this because this was this was a Thanos who who essentially already knew what the future held for him. And he, and he technically like, watched in- Infinity War through Nebula's memories in a way. Yeah, and he was and he was just like, you know, instead of waiting that long, I'm gonna get this shit now. They're collecting everything for me, so I'm just gonna come in here and just wipe, just wipe the, just wipe the floor with them. Mm-hmm. I like, um, <clears throat> I really love the l- one line that he has whenever uh, he's talking to Nebula, and he's like, "They're not trying to prevent me from something I'm going to do. They're trying to undo something I've already done." Oh right. Like, that was such a good line. And then I love the "I am inevitable" in, inevitable mm-hmm. line that 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 Thanos from Infinity War that that he says in this movie he says "I am inev- inevitable," and then Thanos from twenty fourteen says it again in this movie "I am inevitable." Yeah. Kind of all, kind of brings it full circle in terms of in terms of Thanos's arc. But um, let's okay. So Thanos they they undo the snap. Uh, Hawkeye's wife is calling on the phone. I thought that was beautifully done. Like you could have had it both way. Like you could have had gone with any direction. Like you could have had like this amazing uplifting music or something like that once the snap was done, but they kind of slow burned it a bit. You got like Ant Man walking out a little bit, looking at all the birds that like are there now, and then you have Hawkeye's wife calling him, and you saved the whole hero shot for later down the line, which is awesome, by the way. And then just out of nowhere, Thanos just destroys the entire compound, and basically the Avengers are trying to save themselves. And right. Okay. Did, so, I, okay. So, I know that you totally want to get into the third act, and I guess technically we, we are still talking about the third act. But mm-hmm. how 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 the hell does this Thanos just have a time machine? How how did he get Nebula? His ship? Re- you, Nebula, yeah, opens a gateway from 2014 to then, and okay, she gave she gave Thanos the pin particles. Yeah. Okay, but he needs some sort of he, he needs to go in something in order to use the time machine. Did they have a time that did they have a another like like what? Yeah, like I I don't get that. I don't I don't I'm I don't know why I'm having a uh, difficulty understanding how he was man he managed to get from 2014 to the present day. Like I understand like I understand he has the pin particles. I understand that she opened up a gateway, but he on his end, just him having the pin particles sitting on the top of his console and her hitting a button is not going to make him just appear. Like, there has to be something to, like, I don't know. I mean, if, like, yeah. I don't. Yeah. You, you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. No, yeah. Just, I, yeah. Yeah. It just okay. comes down to, like, I guess you just have to assume that he has some crazy tech. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been, been nice to see that. I mean, in a three like, hour uh, movie, like, like, in a three hour this, movie that literally goes through a lot, I guess, you know, you could have spent an extra minute. Uh, explaining how not, he got there. Not even a minute, just like like a like like I don't know, like thirty seconds. Like, oh, maybe freaking Ebony Maw was like designing something just in case Thanos's plan went sideways, and then they needed a do over. Like, like maybe like or something like that. Like that would have been cool, or or or, or something. Just anything but to be to fair, we did see we just saw Nebula put her fingers into the system, so maybe Nebula was also doing something behind the scenes other than just trying to find the origin, the gateway origin. Well. And we know that he saw Nebula's memories of her with the team preparing for the mission, so he know he got to see them making the time machine. Right. So no, she wasn't. She wasn't there when they were making the time machine. She was. I think she was still in a uh, in space. Yeah, no, she wasn't there when they were making it. But there were. Yeah, she was. She was there like, when they were doing the final testing. Yeah, because she had to be there whenever they were making it, because the one that they actually used was <clears throat> the one that Tony had. Mm-hmm. Like, because Tony made the one that they yeah. used. Because at so, first they were using the van, and then after Tony got there, that's when everybody else showed up. And Tony was the one that made that big time machine. And Nebula. So was there. are we? So are we trying to say that within a day, Nebula ha- Thanos figured out uh, through Nebula how to build a time machine and just conveniently had all the parts in that same day and built Damn it man. in that well, same we day. I don't think it was a week because they were also figuring out the location of the Infinity Stones, and they they spent a couple weeks on that at least. 
Yes, but I'm and talking then, about like but when they when they came back. Yeah, but I mean, hey, hey, dude, we we got them time traveling to grab some infinity stones. Yeah, uh, time I mean, heist. I, I mean, I guess I we mean, gotta have some suspension of disbelief. I was I was gonna say like yeah, and, like I get it. Like you know, this this is a comic book movie, and and the the uh, suspending d- your disbelief at some point is is kind of like needed in order for you to enjoy the movie. Like I'm not trying to rip the movie for it. I just found it like I was like, man, how the hell did he get there? Uh. Also, I thought, I thought it was pretty interesting that they did not hear the ship blast the damn ceiling. Yeah, I I noticed that the first time. I'm like, is nobody going to check that? But I guess, like, Hulk's Infinity Gauntlet shenanigans was a little bit Screaming more serious. shit. Yeah. They were also, they, I don't know the exact timing, but they might have been in the, like, lockdown mode still. The, like, yeah, they I think so. Protocol. Also, yeah. they, that Avengers compound might be more than one building. Like, it, it is, but, but that's a big ass rumble. Bro. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I guess I guess you got a point on that. That's uh, a big rumble. But yeah, Thanos shows up. We don't know how. Probably, you know, it's a little glossed over. Whatever. He wrecks up the shop. It's the big three fighting Thanos, and I thought this fight was absolutely awesome, uh, because of one thing. Oh, I mean, like the fight itself was pretty cool, but this was probably like the biggest oh shit moment in the theater. Was Cap getting Mjolnir and kicking his ass with Mjolnir and his shield. Yeah, being able to summon the lightning and stuff. Like uh, I was just like, man, I'm like, I'm like he's this dude really knows how to use this thing. Like, oh exactly. shit. Like, because oh, no, man, because like, he's fought he's fought aside Thor for a very long time. And so, you know, he's probably been watching and like they've had that tactile move in Age of Ultron where Thor hits Cap's shield and it just it like makes this giant wave. And Yeah, like like if, like you wanna talk about pure fan service. Mm-hmm. That was fan service in its purest form, and like I, I think because I I waited so long for that, like I was just over the moon. Like I'm think I'm smiling just thinking about it, dude. Like that was so fucking sick. It was the oh, probably man. the best moment in the movie. I th- I don't know. It's there's a lot of great moments in this movie. That might be my number one or number two moments, favorite moments in the entire movie. Like, oh, that's definitely my favorite moment in the entire movie. Like, like, and then, like, and I, I also like the fact that he kept using it. Like, oh yeah, hundred like, percent. Like, like when he says Avengers Assemble, he's holding it. I was just like, <laughs> just fucking yeah. awesome. My theater erupted when he oh, said Avengers Assemble. It was the biggest clap in the in the entire movie. But I was like, 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 because uh, I've had, I've been having like really bad experiences in the in like theaters, like, mm-hmm. or, like for for like a bit, but seeing endgame with people that like that like love and care about these movies like it was so much fun so much fun like i mm-hmm. like i wish more theater experiences were like that right but you know i need i need that fucking the the shot that you sent basically iron man is down thor is down cap is the only one standing back up his shield is half broken i need that shot like framed of captain america is that wide shot Captain America walking up to Thanos' army. And that then, that that shot alone reminded me of that the moment in the comics where Captain America walks up to to Thanos and he was just like, "As long as one is still standing, you'll never win." Like exactly, that, yeah. That was the visual embodiment of, of that, that of scene. that that line, especially and with I the lo- broken shield. Yeah, yeah. I was like, ah, like I do. I was getting chills. I was just like, man. I was just like, and it, like it just, I, I just, just perfectly captures the essence of who captain america is and and i just love it like no matter what he's just gonna keep getting up and keep fighting no matter if the odds are stacked against him and i'm just like you can tell the russos the russo brothers to their credit also have a just a deep understanding of captain america's arc and his his willingness and his, his pride and everything like they get like they've made this character so damn good like sure yeah like he was good at, i I liked the first captain america movie i liked him in the avengers i thought it was fine but he really started to make an impact with the winter soldier and that's very much part into what the Russo brothers have done with for the character with the character in collaboration with chris evans obviously it was it's the way they made captain america into this icon you got to give props to marvel and, and the Russo brothers for handling his arc so damn well oh yeah I mean, like I'm, I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of of the first Captain America film. I actually think it's it's one of the most underrated films of the MCU. I agree. Yeah, sitting yeah, literally right next to the, to the Incredible Hulk. I love mm-hmm. that movie. I don't mm-hmm. care what anybody says. That's a good movie, and that, and my favorite Hulk, Ed Norton. Yeah. Oh, okay. I respect yeah, I mean, it. 
I, res- I, mean, yeah, I respect it. Yeah, I mean, the only Hulk I really don't like is probably the the Eric Bana. Yeah, that's probably the only one I really don't like. Hey man, don't make me angry. <laughs> don't like me when I'm angry. I, I I I I like the movie. Yeah, but uh, you know, Cap's going up. Then you hear some distortion on his uh on his uh earcom. I, I don't know what the I guess the ear ear communication earpiece earpiece. Dude, I struggled with what to call that earlier too. Yeah, <laughs> I was I was like, what is it? It's like an earpiece. Then you hear Sam say, "On your left," which is a fantastic callback to the Winter Soldier again. How did he know he was gonna be on his left? Hmm. Uh, oh. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter, man. It was the moment. How did he the... know exactly where Captain America was before the portal opened? <laughs> Yo, uh, put the portal on his left hand side, please. You know, uh, T'Challa, Okoye, and Shuri come out, and the music it, it doesn't start off as epic, but then like Falcon comes out, then the music starts to kick in, then Doctor Strange comes in, then the Guardians, then Spider Man, which got the biggest pop too. Out of all the yeah, because all by, the freaking girls were like, "Oh my god, Daddy Holland!" Oh my god. <laughs> Like, literally, I, like I love Spider Man. I love Tom Holland and Spider Man, but literally, he got the biggest like applause when everybody was coming back more than Black Panther. Uh, yeah, like everybody like ate it up, and like you could like I thought it was just I would ju- it would just be the heroes, right? Nope, it was the Ravagers. It was all the wizards. It was all of Wakanda. It was. Yo, uh, I like how I like how Wong finally got off his ass. <laughs> Wong, <this> shit. <laughs> Wong finally got off his ass. You had the Wasp. You have you had every you had. Pepper Potts suit up as rescue. You had the Asgardians. You had Valkyrie, Korg, Meek, Howard the Duck of all people. You had. I did. I did see that screenshot, and I did yeah. not notice that Howard the Duck was there to fight Thanos and his army. Like how how cool is that, man? Like Holy you crap. can only just imagine, like the Russo brothers saying, "Could you put Howard the Duck in this battle?" <laughs> like literally. CG. So somebody somebody compared to this 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 final battle as like the final battle of Ready Player One, which I still haven't seen, by the way. Yeah, I liked Ready Player One a lot, but like this was, like, like this was just like something unfathomable, like something you would only dream of seeing after reading like years of comics. Like you would never have thought you would see a moment like this, like executed, like seen on the big screen, and like getting the applause it deserves, and like you're seeing Giant Man punch a giant uh fucking chitari ship you're seeing like spider-man a ride a pegasus <laughs> like there's no other movie that's gonna be like this for years to come and I, this I, oh, sorry go ahead i was gonna say this i was just like i i, I didn't i didn't want to say it, but i'm gonna say it anyway like if like i if we happen to get like a scene like that but involving dc characters i'm gonna have a fucking panic i'm gonna have a heart attack man I, i'm gonna be I crying almost have... i'm gonna be shaking on the ground this yeah like this is like this is the probably the best moment in any comic book movie ever like oh avenge yeah. from avengers to assemble to the music like the icon the iconic now iconic score of alan Silvestri just coming in and like just that wide shot of all both armies just coming 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 like about to just go at it it was nuts like i literally was like what am i watching and like in the best way possible like it was oh yeah dude like i was i was on the i was on the edge of my seat my seat the entire time with my mouth open and i was like legit shaking during that part like i was dude i was so invested i was i loved every moment of of that fight like just just, like that awesome like that like all like female superhero shower they're like uh, with that captain marvel trying to get that trying to get the the gauntlet to the uh, if you really break it down this is just like the best football game you've ever seen in a way yeah, yeah i like, like like i mentioned in chat to in chat i was just like i was like the third service the the third service jesus christ <laughs> the, the, the third act was literally just fan service as fuck and you and... know what it, 22 movies 11 years if i'm not like given fan service then you know what the fuck in, in my yeah, I'm here. like this movie. This movie was a love letter to everyone who has been along for this 22 long movie journey, mm-hmm. and it's just like, it's just like, hey, you you love these characters, you love this universe, you love these worlds. Here, here they all are, Boom. all together in like this massive, massive, mat. When I say massive, I mean massive, like 
battle royale to the death. Like this, the stakes just feel so high. They feel personal, and everybody gets a moment to shine for the most part. Um, it was so nuts. Like I was just completely b- blown away by every second of it. Like I said, this yeah. is probably the best moment and scene and hour in comic book movie history. Yeah. You uh you mentioned the word death, so I guess we could go ahead and actually I do I do into... I do want to get to Alex's view on this whole third Oh act. yeah, Alex has just been mad silent, bro. Say some <laughs> shit. Bro, yeah, no, I mean the, this third act is literally insane. Like I think it's easily the third the best third act in any comic book movie. Like it just is it's pure comic book epicness. Like I yeah, I was I thought I was having a heart attack, like watching this from like Avengers to assemble to like all the different action shots. Like everyone has something crazy to do. Like we see Black Panther running with the gauntlet, like Spider-Man trying to keep it away. Riding a his, Pegasus. Like, instant... Dude. Yeah. His like instant kill mode moment was awesome. Oh, yeah. um, like that was so cool. Uh, I've got to mention it before we move on. Scarlet Witch had yes. one of the best moments yes. in the entire movie. Yes. And I'm so glad that she's getting more appreciation now too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she's getting her own show. On yeah, like, I, like I mentioned in chat, like she almost single-handedly killed Thanos, dude. Bro, like, yeah, she straight up did. terrified. If it him. wasn't for the like, giant ship, she would have been. He yeah, no, he was literally like, "Oh shit, blow everything up! She's oh, about to kill me." I like, love the delivery too. <laughs> she says, "Like you took everything from me," and Thanos says, uh, "I don't even know you." And Wanda <laughs> just in the most badass way possible. You will, like, dude, and then holy Rex is, shit! It was he's like, no, awesome. he's like, no, he's like, no, he's like, no, this motherfucker, I'm his bitch, better do it, <laughs> dude. Yeah, straight up, he's uh, like, do it. It's straight up in fear for his life. She was straight up gonna rip him apart. Hundred um, percent. So yeah, that moment, I absolutely lost my shit. That's definitely one of my favorite moments of the movie. Right. Um, so glad that we got to see her power like on full display. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Yo, yeah, that shit made me a Scarlet Witch fan. Bro, yeah. I can't. I'm dying to see where a show goes. Like, I'm confused by the timeline of which the show takes place. Like, I've heard it takes place in the 50s or something like that. I, okay, so, so I've I heard have... that. I, I've heard that it takes place, and like, and by heard I mean like as recently as yesterday. That like it's gonna take place after Endgame is gonna is gonna focus on on her trying to figure out a way to bring Vision back. Yeah. Okay. See, I ha- so I have theories. So I think that it does take place post Endgame. And my theory that I've had since Infinity War is that Shuri figured out how Vision can live without the Mind Stone, like in Infinity War. I mm-hmm. think that she figured it out. And so I think the beginning of the show might be trying to figure out how to get Vision back. Sure. Um, and then I think that the 50s thing can just come in from reality warping and or time travel. Because I do hate really... the title, though, of the of the show. <laughs> was, was it a uh, was it WandaVision? WandaVision. <laughs> oh, yeah. not fucking horrible. It's a terrible like title. It, but, but the title is whatever. the title is meaningless. But, um, um, you know, also, though, can can note that this is the second time in both these movies that Wanda has gone one on one with Thanos and hold held her own this time. Yes. Actually, like fucking yes. his shit up. So <coughs> nuts. Completely. Most powerful Avenger. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but yeah. That's debatable. It is but, debatable. I mean, but I, I, Wanda's I, I, I certainly so very so. much powerful. They've gone out of her. They got. They've gone out of their way to prove that Wanda's very much can can stand on her own. But uh, uh, what else was there? Like this third act was just just so mind blowing and just so unexpected. Like even those small moments, like when. Cap caught Stormbreaker, but Thor caught his hammer, and then Thor's like, "No, you you take the little one." Like I, I was like laughing. I was in awe it, when Iron Man finally hugs Spider Man. Like that, that like kind of warmed my heart a little after the relationship that was established in Civil War and further explored in Homecoming. Like it was just the small little payoffs. Like even instant kill, like that mode, like the insta kill mode, like the small little payoffs you didn't know you needed. We're in this movie and in this third act too. It was fucking mind blowing. But yeah. And then uh, was there anybody else before before we get into the big the big sacrifice, obviously. Was there anything else in this third act anybody wanted to mention? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, no, I feel like we covered everything. Oh well I, it does kind of suck that uh that like Pretty much everybody came back, or and, like everyone's like kind of like super happy except for Peter Quill because the Gamora that was there is not his Gamora. Mm-hmm. So we he do get a sense to start from scratch. Yeah, so we, we get a sense of where Guardians Three is going, but we'll we'll get into that towards the end. Uh, 
the very end of well not the very end but towards the end of the battle um Thanos has beats Captain Marvel 1v1 and there's a shot of Iron Man he's looking and then he just looks at Doctor Strange and Doctor Strange very slowly starts to make a like the starts to make one on on his hand like I don't know what it's called he just says one doesn't say one but he makes the gesture one and like this was it like this is what this is the only way that we win and tony knew that and then tony just tries to grab the you think that tony tries to grab the gauntlet off and you know i thought when thanos like punched him away i thought oh no he's about to thanos is about to snap again like i thought oh no he's we've lost again and then he just snaps but nothing happens I'm really confused by this part. Like, so when this, how did the stones just go up Tony's hand? It's Tony's tech. So, I mean, I just, he's hold, he holds Thanos's hand for a moment whenever mm-hmm. they're like clashing. He like has his hand there for a second. And you can actually even hear like the tech moving around kind of, and it's the stones transferring from Thanos's hand to Tony's. But also before that, I did, I, this just kind of came up as uh, right before I was uh, about to get on the show. In Infinity War, they they made it out of the way. They said that the giant dwarf in Infinity War that he made all, the only weapon that can harness the power of all six stones, and Tony just ha- puts it on his armor. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess there goes that suspension of disbelief at the end there, my guy. <laughs> I didn't yeah, really I think really... much of it. I was just like, yo, yeah, I just could randomly thought about it. Like I saw some art with him, like about like with the gauntlet off i was like wait wait a minute i thought in infinity war they said this the infinity gauntlet was the only device that could harness the uh the power of the stones whatever it made well, oh, sorry, also ahead. also we're, we're, we're i think you're also thinking of thinking about it in like in like regards to like it would actually it's actually holding them for a sustained period of time maybe he knew he if he needed it he'd only need it for a brief moment like maybe he knew that Whatever tech he designed for it to hold the stones was unstable, but he he didn't design it for it to be used for an extended period of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like I, maybe I guess... he designed it enough to the point where okay, it can hold the it can hold the stones for a very brief brief moment, long enough for me to be able to use them if need be. Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess that's a good way to put it. To be honest, that that that, that was that was kind of like my own personal explanation explanation for for that because I, I i too questioned that i was just like oh i was like okay i, I guess he he's got space tech now yeah i was like okay and then i just i just love how how like that whole scene went down because like he like you said he he punches tony away and he just goes i am inevitable and no like dead ass, fingers dead ass i thought then, they lost again like dead ass yep and yep and then and then and then they go up tony's arm on his hand and he goes i am Iron Man snaps his finger. I was just like, ah! Like that. Uh, like I, to be honest, that sounds very cheesy on paper, but just the way they delivered it, it worked a hundred percent. And plus, it fits. It, it him saying something like that fits within the context of his character. A hundred percent. I didn't really think like, oh, like that. They just, like that. That was kind of lame or whatever. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, no. Snaps Thanos and his entire army out of existence i just love that i love that shot where where uh, thanos realizes what happened like he realizes that he's lost mm-hmm. and you see him sit down and you can see him just pondering and then he just puts his head yeah, it was very reminiscent away. of the shot in infinity war towards at the very end when he's sitting down in his farm mm-hmm. like him yeah, just I, like I, looking it was like mm-hmm. it was very was poetic like, perfect and then he goes and then away we, uh, yeah and, and he, then we then get into and then we get into the biggest cry moment. Actually, well, not for, not for me. Really? Yeah. All right. We'll, 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 we'll get to that. So let's we'll get to that. Oh, yeah. The, the second one was also a big cry. But yeah. Tony, you learn. <laughs> big, big cry. <laughs> big cry. I, I freaking was. I lost it by, by the end of the movie. Uh, but uh, you learn that that snap ultimately killed is what got what's what tony would kill tony and like tone like peter shows up mr stark we won like it was just so heartbreaking to watch we did it sir and I was we just did like, it what? and like i i couldn't tell but like it was like he, you could tell he was not all there like he tony or like yeah tony like like it's like he just like he was just like looking off into the distance while while 
yeah while he, peter was talking to him like he just wasn't there he, he wasn't, wasn't there really talking to pepper the only time he really talked was pepper came in and then he just quietly says pepper like that that's it <laughs> Pepper. Yeah, no, like it's just super. I just you want to know which part of that really like hit me hard mm-hmm. was uh when she she looked at him. She was like Tony, Tony. She was just like, "We're gonna be okay. You can mm-hmm. rest now." And I was oh. just like, ah! "Because <laughs> I was like, fuck." <laughs> his entire arc, like he's been nonstop trying to perfect the world, like trying to put a suit of armor around the world. Like that's his arc. He was not able to rest his to to rest. And for him to, like, Gwyneth, Gwyneth Paltrow, like, for her to deliver the final line to him in a way, it was really something special to watch. Mm-hmm. It was, it was, like, fucking beautiful. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, man, that fucking got me. And then everyone's there, and he, then the, the, the light in the arc reactor mm-hmm. goes off, and his hand slides down, and it's just silence. It was perfect. No, no swelling music. No, 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 nothing. It's just everyone realizing that the, uh, the, the founder of the founder of the, the MCU, the, the founder of the Avengers, essentially one of the main people that the reason why this whole universe exists, just sacrificed his life for the fate of the universe. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 there's such a beautiful ending for that character. I love uh, I love Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man and kind of seeing him go out like that. As much as I was sad to see him go, um, it was just it was perfect. Like I couldn't have asked for a better send off really for him. A hundred percent. Alex, what's and your? It, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Mm. <clears throat> I'll let Alex talk. Right, Alex, what's your uh, takeaway on Iron Man's big sacrifice? I mean, yeah, I just think it was the perfect ending to his arc. Like. Mm-hmm. It, there there couldn't be a better way for tony to go out like you were saying he's just been going like nonstop since the first iron man trying to do things and and yeah now he finally gets to rest um and just the fact that like the fate of the marvel universe like comes down to his decision like is just so fitting mm-hmm. like it all started with him and then it rests on his shoulders at the end and and him doing that and just that literally that shot of him like kneeling there with the gauntlet on his hand like it's too epic like it literally that that image was burned into my brain oh yeah 100 percent. like even the i I am iron man it's immortal it's his final line in in the entire franchise and it's the perfect line it's it's so good Mm -hmm. like it it's just perfect and then uh yeah that and then mixed with the funeral scene and and what um the funeral scene like having everybody there in that one in that one tracking shot Oh, it was such a good tracking shot. It like it so shows the, the legacy that like Iron Man started, and then also the like the proof that Tony Stark has a heart. Like, oh, lost it. Oh, oh I, I lost know, it. Like legit. Like, I, I was already it. like I was already like tearing up when I saw that. I legit like started like shedding tears. I no, told yeah, you bro, that it was literally it's so powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I, I mean, Tony's sacrifice and his arc was just completed in the most poetic and perfect way. I loved how too this movie felt in a lot of ways like a, a love letter to not only the entire MCU but also to like Tony and then and and Cap too. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, it was a perfect send off. And you didn't even have to include the kid from Iron Man three. Like, no, not a lot. Not a pe- lot of people recognize it was the kid from Iron Man three. Like I that did, random. Yeah, I recognized it instantly. I recognized it Same instantly. Like, and you didn't the need only him there. Kid, it could be. Yeah, like you yeah. didn't need him there. But I love how they went out of their way to like put him there. I just I ate it up. I was like, oh my god! And then Nick Fury there, like at the very end, he just walks there. I was like, oh my god! Like it's those two that really started because he was there at the end of Iron Man, the first Iron Man, talking to him about the Avengers and the first Avengers the first initiative. First post, first post credit scene. But uh, yeah, yeah, um, it it was it was amazing, and the the entire send off was beautiful. The music, the fact that everybody was there. Like even like even Nick Fury, even the kid from uh, uh, Iron Man three, like it was it was just really poetic. And then uh, the uh, I'm getting teary eyed thinking about it now. The scene between Happy and Morgan, like the ultimate callback, and like you know uh, you hungry cheeseburgers. Like man. he's like I'm gonna get you all the damn cheese or I'm gonna get you all the cheeseburgers in the world. Like it just felt so like nice and heartwarming and it just everything. It like really. It just struck something with me. I really dug it. Yeah, I yeah. It hit me so much that I actually like got cheeseburgers. <laughs> like I was just like, I'm doing this for my. I'm doing this for. 
Rob. Yeah, just 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 great. Yeah, it was really I liked it a lot. But uh then we get into to Cap has to return the stones. The mission's not done yet. He goes in, he's supposed to come out five seconds later, he doesn't come out, and we learn some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we learn that he ends up when he goes back in time, he stays in nineteen forty five with Peggy Carter and when he when he's reconnects with Sam and well I think it was just Sam yeah it was just Sam uh on the park bench gives him the shield basically he's n- now the new Captain America and to finally like see him also at not at rest but like fulfilled his mission in a way and finally can live the life that he's always wanted that really like that brought it home for me like that real I think Sam doesn't deserve the shield. Yes, he does. No, he doesn't. He doesn't, Bucky can't be that public figure. I've talked about this. Yeah, but I know, like I understand why he's not getting the mantle, but I still don't think Sam has been around long enough or done enough in the MCU to deserve the mantle of Captain Fucking America. I just don't I don't I mean I think I it's just more of like, you know, it is just a passing the mantle. Think- Sorry, I don't ahead. think he's even gonna go by Captain America. Yeah, I think he's just still he gonna go. He's gonna go not. by. He's gonna probably go by Falcon. Hence the name of the show, Falcon and Winter Soldier. But well, they also can't call it Captain America and Winter Soldier when I, I guess. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I Captain guess Captain America, and then like, oh wait, no, he's a fucking fossil now, like an actual fossil this time. But like, you know, well, you also can't call it Captain America and Winter Soldier because the name of the second movie is Captain America and the Winter Soldier. So yeah. you're you're drawing confusion. But the thing is, but also you can't even call him Winter Soldier because he's not Winter Soldier anymore. I mean, he's, yeah, you could still call the White Wolf. White Wolf. Yeah, White Wolf. Maybe. I guess I could see that. Yeah. But uh, I really i i got I think I lost it the most when like he uh it, the very last scene of the movie you just hear the old classic music you see two people dancing in a house and it's Peggy and it's Steve. They Dan- finally got the dance. Finally, finally got man. The- it was so poetic and it was so beautiful. It was the perfect, the perfect ending out of all the endings that uh, they have in this movie. Because you just, because you just see the peace on his face. Mm-hmm. Like he's, he's happy. It's, it was, like, like he's, he's, he's like, I decided to, I, st- I decided to stick around and try to have some of that life that Tony was trying to was telling me to get. Like, mm-hmm. and like, this yeah. is all he's wanted since the beginning. Was he missed out on so much? And he was always a man at a time, and he really felt like he was only home with Peggy. And it was just, it was fucking beautiful. I, I ate it up. Alex. Yeah, no, I was, it was, yeah, it was phenomenal. Alex, I needed an assist yeah. from you, man. No, yeah, I mean, I actually, this was the, the one ending that I was really hoping they would give to Cap. Like, mm-hmm. since I knew time travel was going to be involved, I was like, man, I hope they have him go back and actually, like, live out his life with Peggy. Mm-hmm. And... So the fact that they did that, like, I was so excited about that. Um, it's, again, I mean, like, it's a perfect ending for his arc. It's all he's wanted. It's it's what he's, you know, been fighting for, and he, he, he gets to have that. And then, yeah, so this was the thing that I was talking about where uh, for a while it was I, I couldn't figure out how this could work and not destroy the timeline. But it does if you just have Cap delivers all the stones back where they need to be. And then goes into the past and stays in the 40s. And then all he really has to do is Peggy and him just have to live pretty low key lives. But the way, not do much. yeah, the way I saw it, like you know, they went out of the way. If you change the past, it doesn't affect our future. That's that that was established. So the way yeah. I perceived it was that this was always, this was always a part of the main timeline. This was always Cap's destiny to go back. This was yeah. all part so- of it. The way that it, yeah, it creates a loop because it just, it literally, Cap goes back, stays through the 40s, does that. Mm-hmm. And then Peggy just live a pretty low key life so it doesn't re- disrupt the timeline a lot. And then all older Cap has to do is avoid his younger self once he comes out of the ice from 2011 till 2023 when he then goes back to live with Peggy mm-hmm. and it just closes the circle. And so, really, if you think about it, it's actually pretty crazy because then you have uh, like Dinosaur Cap who exists. At the same time as the events of the Winter Soldier, but right, um, 100%. but yeah, so it works. <laughs> it, it makes it makes a loop, and and it, and it ends up, and that's the way that it has to because he ends up at that park bench that old. So like he's in the timeline that we know, and it was but, always meant to be. 
Yeah. And even though it was a long process of him getting there, like I think almost like 11 years, pretty much, or 12, maybe even longer, uh, he got back and it was fucking awesome. And, you know, this, this movie, what, what's really smart about this movie is not only is it the end of some storylines, uh, obviously being the main six Avengers or five, I guess, because, you know, this also sets up some what phase four could look like. Well, how Spider-Man Far From Home might play out and how Guardians of the Galaxy 3 might play out considering Thor might be a part of the team now. Mm-hmm. So, Cause like, cause he, cause he, he refers to them as the Asgardians uh, of the Galaxy, which I think mm-hmm. is a team in the comics. It's, it's, in the comics. Recent, recent comics. It's a book that's actually been out right now. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's pretty Yeah, new. so I'm, I'm guessing he's going to be a part do of Do you it? think that might they might stick with it? Or do you think it'll be like, oh, Thor went off to do this? I think it might uh, be Thor went off to do this. <laughs> I, I think they might keep him around because I think I think everyone likes the dynamic between him and Peter Quill. There's kind of like this like mini. Power oh yeah, that's struggle. that scene was really funny between the two when they were uh, when they were actually that that scene dragged on a little bit too long. Oh, I, I liked it. I, the audience was the entire audience was laughing. Uh, I I really liked it a lot, and I think you know Thor. If if Thor ends up sticking with the Guardians, I I really think that uh, it'd be a good match because thor ragnarok in a lot of ways kind of was like a guardians of the galaxy movie and i feel like yeah. chris hamsworth chris hamsworth has really found his groove with the character like he's he's gone on record and saying you know i was really bored with thor at first but like what what, what i did with Ta- what we did with taika waititi for ragnarok really brought fresh blood and fresh life into it and now i now i, I i'll play thor for as long as as they want me to so and i feel like considering guardians 3 was supposed to be coming out next year Despite uh, and then all the James Gunn drama, dra- James Gunn drama happened. Uh, I, I, you, they put him in here for they put him with the Guardians for a reason. And I, so I do feel like he will be a part of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really quickly since since we've already covered most of the movie, like I want to go ahead and talk about the the quote unquote end scene credit scene or whatever, which was wasn't really well a scene it was more of, of like an audio thing. You hear the sound of somebody like hitting like an anvil. I think I believe it's Tony it's, making his first suit. Yeah, it's only yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it, yeah. It was Tony making his first suit, and I have seen some of the most ridiculous like theories online. They're like, oh yeah, no, like most people think that that's just like them, you know, like a callback to Tony making his suit in the cave, and they're like, but it also could be that he's not dead. And I was just like, what? There's like there are, like some theories going around saying that like that like before like before Tony like snapped. Uh, actually, as Tony snapped, he like transferred his consciousness into another body or something like that, which is the reason why he wasn't really like, uh, like all there when 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 Pepper and and Peter tried, like came up to talk to him. Like he wasn't, his mind wasn't there. Um, and then I saw another one that said that like maybe uh, like uh, I'm trying to remember what the other one was, or like that he like created a different body. And like it's off somewhere, and I was just like, I think that's a really bad idea. Like, I know it's not like uh, they 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 didn't do that, but I think it'd be a really bad idea to leave him alive or have him come back in some way because I feel like that kind of uh, like lessens the impact of his death. Because when when they were fighting, and he asked uh, Doctor Strange, he was just like, "Yeah, you said you've seen uh, like over fourteen million scenarios. At least I think it was fourteen. You said, and only one." And only one we actually won is this it. And Dr. Shing was just like, if I tell you what happens, it's not going to happen. Because he probably knew that if he told hey, told Tony, oh, yeah, hey, if if uh, like you're going to end up sacrificing your life to, to save everyone, he might have hesitated. He might have tried to do something where he could have saved himself. Like it was a selfless act. And I think it was wise for them to, to like, just, I think it'd be wise for them to kind of just leave it. Just let him die. Just let him just be at peace. And I don't know where Zane went because Zane just muted himself. Zane, the hell you yeah. at, man? No, I, I definitely agree that it wouldn't really be a good, um, a good idea to have him come back in any way. Like, it totally undermines everything that we just um, saw and like experienced with this movie. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. I thought that the 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 entire ending was fantastic. I agree that it does do a good job too of setting up possibilities that we can see like in the future like you know like we mentioned the Asgardians the galaxy thing and then I think I hope anyways 
that maybe Hawkeye and Wanda might start up a West Coast Avengers team. I could see that happening. Um, so I think that would be interesting. Uh, we, of course, got the like the A-Force shot with, you know, the all-female uh, yeah. Avengers. And I know that like most of the actresses behind that want that movie. So that could be interesting. I like that um, Valkyrie is now the like leader of Asgard, kind of. Like, Did that ever happen in the comics? Do you? No, it hasn't. And okay. so I'm really I'm interested to know what the Thor four pitch was like and what it might have in relation to that. So, um, oh, yeah, because she yeah, because she did say that they pitched. Uh, I think it was it was it, I think did her and Tyka do it or did her and her and Chris Hemsworth do it or something? Like I don't know. If, pitched? I don't know. I just know that she said that like I know Tyka at least was involved, but. I know she said that they that it had it had been pitched, so yeah. I'm I'm just very I'm, I'm very curious to see how the new version of the Avengers is gonna look. Yeah, like, it's gonna like, be interesting. Well, we yeah. know that like, Doctor Strange and like Black Panther are probably the ones leading it up. Yeah, I think that'd be wise. I think I think that'd be wise. I'm so excited for more doctor strange i think they do a fantastic job of like immediately establishing his presence like right in the mcu and how much like you had to get the origin out of the way like i get that but now that he's like building towards sorcerer supreme it's gonna be something i mean they wasted like he's they wasted yeah they wasted no time establishing that like he is sorcerer supreme and like Mm -hmm. that he's like the best of them too exactly like Like, the ancient one goes out of her way to say that he's supposed to be the best of us yeah and Benedict Cumberbatch is perfect. Oh, a hundred percent. Like I was on board with the casting since day one. Like it is perfect casting. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know if you guys talked about this while I was gone for like two minutes. But we now know what potentially what the Loki show could be about now. <laughs> it's, oh it's, yeah, it's quote unquote a prequel, technically, which means that it's going to be set in 2012 after he disappears with the Tesseract in the new timeline. Yep, yeah, yeah. I, feel, I feel like it's, it's worth mentioning. It's the new time, timeline, not the original timeline. The original it's a, it's timeline a different timeline. That is next snap. Yeah, it's it's a different timeline, which means you could do pretty much whatever you want. It's an it's, yeah. Like, it's, you don't it's have to follow. Like a, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. It's, it's a, no. I was, I was basically just gonna say it's essentially kind of like a what if. Yeah, uh, essentially, it's a ginormous yeah. just what if show, and now I'm even more if if the Loki show is following the events of what happened in Endgame, like I was already excited for the Loki show. But I'm even more excited for it right now. Yeah, it's. Mm, I don't. I mean, I know I, you were. I know you're still on fence about it, but yeah, because I just I feel like Loki is an overused character in the MCU. I just do. I I I've thought that since, um, Ragnarok. I was just like, I'm tired of. I'm tired of Loki. I just am. And then they killed him. I was just like, oh hey, look at that. <laughs> I Something think it's different. interesting that they can go with like a completely different direction for his character. Right. I think now. like literally like I, I like Loki and I know a lot of people still very much like Loki. So Josh, you might be in the minority on this and I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know that. But like um, literally I'm hoping I'm hoping I'm hoping that it's very it's going to be right after we see him teleport off and literally this is just you could do what you could tell whatever story you want as Loki pretty much. Like I can't wait, like because it's a new timeline. You could do, you could set your own rules. Yeah, I, I can't wait for that. And then we got, uh, we we already mentioned Guardians three. Uh, we we talked about Loki, Falcon and Winter Soldier. That's gonna, uh, that's the show I'm excited for the most. Right next to WandaVision, I think, because I think WandaVision is gonna be pretty Wanda. damn good. I still hate the title, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, it's a great th- title. I'll defend it. It's, yeah, I mean, it, it's just the title is just title. It's the title is meaningless. What makes it great? Yeah, I mean, I just see. have a heavy bias, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the main, the very first thing we're gonna see post Endgame is Spider Man Far From Home, and now we know why they blocked off the year on Peter's passport in the trailer. Oh I, yeah, I, I don't know if I anybody think... caught that, but when he was I getting his passport, they blo- they. CGI'd out the day, uh, the year, sorry, of his passport issue date in in the trailer. Now we know why, and it kind of raises the question that where all of his friends dusted at the end of Infinity War because they're back. I mean, in the, the main s- cast, the main cast has to have been. Yeah, which really sucks for them at least. Yeah, but I. Uh, no, sorry, go ahead. 
I was going to say in that same vein, I really like that we got the five year gap and that um, all the people who are brought back are just brought back after the five years. Like I love that the damage from Infinity War like still happened. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I was so worried this movie was just going to completely undo Infinity War. Like they were going to undo Gamora's death. They were going to undo Loki's death. No, the stakes from Infinity War stuck. Like, I really appreciated that. And like, yeah, you know, the Dusted characters are coming back. But that, that was like kind of like a given. But like, I yeah. just didn't I just didn't want Infinity War to just I didn't want Endgame to just completely undo Infinity War and just make that movie kind of useless in a way. But no, it, yeah. they they stuck to the guns. Like, sure, Gamora's back, but not not the same Gamora. Like the Gamora that we grew to love in Guardians Two and parts of Infinity War is gone. Loki that we've seen evolved into an anti-hero and a bit of a hero up until Ragnarok, he's gone. And like you know, the, like it was just kind of good to see that they didn't completely undo it. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Um, I do want to. Gotta give a shout out to someone who like never gets appreciation. At least I never see appreciation for her. Uh, Sarah Finn is oh the casting director. Of... Yeah, the casting director for the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. She, she does damn good work. She, she picked good everyone. She has literally a damn every good eye. every single character. Even uh, a, was a Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man, the very first, the one that scratched a lot of people, the one that made everybody scratch their heads. Yeah, she literally picked everyone. So she. Even Vin Diesel is Groot. <laughs> she's a godsend when it comes to to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Hundred percent, and a lot of work, like a lot of credit, has to be given to Kevin Feige, John Favreau for starting this damn universe, the Russo brothers for carrying the baton, all the filmmakers involved throughout all three phases of the Marvel movies, and the entire yeah the entire folks at Disney. It's kind of weird to think like this is also technically a Disney movie. <laughs> technically, yeah. It's kind of weird to say, but like literally, what? Technically, in Captain Marvel's a Disney princess. Technically, Meg Griffin is now a Disney princess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, literally, this is this is an achievement unlike anything we've ever seen, and probably will never see again. Like it's yeah, there's nothing topping this. There's this... There, like like especially especially financially. Mm -hmm. No, literally, yeah. This this movie like it, um broke the biggest box office record by a hundred million dollars like it reached one billion in one weekend one point three days one point two billion in three that days. is that is unheard of like literally it's we all thought like you know the, when the estimates were coming in oh 280 might hit i was very unconvinced it was gonna hit 300 because I, th I thought the the hype for infinity war was pretty damn high and that only i hit would like it noted that i said between 300 and 400 million yeah that's true i would give i would like Alex. i would like to note that i was the first one out of all of us that said that it's gonna hit a billion in, in, a, in the first i don't know i've been saying a billion for a while but well i didn't hear his own account I, <laughs> yeah <laughs> i just didn't think it was like possible considering the hype that infinity war and the force awakens had too but the hype that infinity war had and that only made 257 million this movie, plus its three-hour runtime, this movie made a hundred million dollars more than Infinity War, and made double its worldwide opening than Infinity War. Like, I was like looking at the numbers. I was like, like what the hell? <laughs> like in the best way possible, obviously. But like, holy shit! It's nice. unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Do you think this movie is gonna catch Avatar? That's the next question. Yes, you think I don't know. I because uh, because Avatar made how many how much money? Avatar? Two point seven billion. 2. 7. But the thing is, though, Avatar had no competition for months. I mean, yeah, that's it's just it's going to be really tough. I think it's possible, but like this movie's super front loaded, and mm -hmm. I I don't know. I I mean, it has a chance for sure, but like because I mean, you, it, you also have to you, remember that like the people that like did. There, I know so many people that are waiting until next weekend to see it. Yeah, that's true. That's a big. Yeah. That's also a big thing because, like, since it was so sold out this past weekend, and so that I think the second weekend will be interesting to see. But I mean, the drop is going to be big. Like when you have a big number, like three hundred something million opening. Weekend, oh yeah, the drop. The drop is going to be, like, be big no matter what. Yeah, that's inevitable. But mm -hmm. um, 
No, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I, I hope that it can. But, like, I mean, even if you look at Infinity War's box office, like, Infinity War made, like, uh, just over $2 billion. Like, it was still $700 million short mm-hmm. of catching up. And I think if like, any movie has a shot, it is this one, I think. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because mm-hmm. it's already, it, like, it's almost halfway there already, which is nuts mm-hmm. to think about. So... I th- I don't know like Detective Pikachu I think could be some big competition I think Godzilla could be some competition I think Toy Story is going to be a big hurdle I just I don't know I want it to beat Avatar because I think Avatar is just an okay movie uh, but you know that's neither here or there uh, I I think this movie might have a shot I won't be surprised I think it will be Titanic for sure I think this is going to be the number two film regardless but would it beat Avatar? I have no idea. So yeah, I don't know. I really hope it does, but yeah. So. But uh, any final thoughts on Avengers Endgame, aka the biggest movie we're ever gonna get in our generation? I'm not. No, I mean, like we pretty much said everything. The movie's just phenomenal. It, it is a quite an achievement. Mm-hmm. Something like this. And the fact that we we were alive to see it, experience it, and like, like I, I'm always gonna remember this movie. Like if I, you know, like like when I'm like ninety or some shit. Yeah, you know, I'll, you know through a tube and be like, "Yo, Endgame." <laughs> Endgame. But you know, you I forgot who brought up the the question in our group chat, but somebody said, "You know, is Thanos on the same level as Darth Vader?" And that got me thinking a little bit, and I said, "Not, no." But if you think about it, like it, this entire this entire Marvel Cinematic Universe is our generation's Star Wars, in a lot of ways. Like this, it's just this. I would I would agree with that. Like it's just ginormous pop culture, just generational event that we have witnessed today and continue to witness with the first Avengers. You know, the Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, all these record breaking movies, all culminating into this massive achievement. And I feel like this this is our modern version of Star Wars in terms of generational franchises. So like, we're never gonna get something like this again. So and yeah, you know, I, yeah I think I think I would I would agree with that too. Yeah. So, Alex, any final end game? I mean, it it's just crazy the fact that we've seen this now and gotten here. Like, I mean, I was eleven when Iron Man came out. This Mm. is literally like the MCU has been around for literally half of my life. And so to like grow up watching these and see everything happen and then to to get to this point and this, you know, being the end of of this era um, of the MCU. And yeah, I mean, it's it's just like the crowning achievement, like Infinity War and Endgame are are back to back. uh, The best comic book movie experience that you can get. 100%. Uh, and they're only heightened by everything that's come before it. Like I, I know I've seen people like argue that Infinity War like doesn't hold its like doesn't hold its own as like a standalone movie. And like, well, yeah, no shit. Like it, that's not what it is. Mm-hmm. Like it's designed to. Yeah, it's literally like it's designed to be a cap on everything that came before it. Like you're not this and supposed- Endgame. Yeah, like you're not supposed to just watch one of these. Like this isn't supposed to be the first one. Like, yeah, could you could you imagine only watching Endgame, like never seeing it like a like an MCU movie, and then just going directly to the like either finish? yeah either you're on this hype train by now, or you're never just going to be a part of the hype train ever again <laughs> or like at all. Yeah, and like and so I mean, but yeah, they they're just literally like there. There's nothing else like them. They're I, it's insane. <laughs> I think Phase Four will do a pretty good job, like kind of setting up a new, like like a new mcu kind of like it's still gonna be the same mcu that we know and love but it's gonna set some new ground like with some new characters coming into play like like the eternals like shang chi uh the continuation of the spider-man universe obviously the sequels that we're gonna get with black panther and and um and dr strange and and you know the streaming services the streaming service shows uh i should say so i just feel like it's like it's gonna become something different and i'm i'm i mean it's exciting times that we live in now to, to witness Absolutely. something like this so you know i'm I'm just so flabbergasted that a movie like this just exists like it's nuts and like again i'm i'm about to go see it again 
Oh, but I was just about to like, yeah, what time, what time is your Yeah, movie? so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to wrap up the show. Uh, so, oh, I don't you, so that, that was a mistake. Uh, that will do it for us, uh, the ABNC show, uh, ginormous Avengers Endgame wrap up, spoiler, full on nerd discussion. Uh, Alex, where can people find you on social media, man? Uh, you can find me at AP Batman with two T's. I just tweet about comics and movies and video games and all that that mm-hmm. shit. And uh, Josh, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at DCU News, and you can also find me on Twitter at Really Sharp, that is sharp with an E. And check out MediaByte.com for articles and stuff and things and yeah, <laughs> stuff and things. And that that link will certainly be in the description. Uh, and you can find me at Packy Bro on Instagram and Twitter, P A K I B R U H Bruh, <laughs> on, like I said, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, any final thoughts before we wrap it up? Any last words? Bro, I'm, I'm, who are you going to miss more, Captain America or Iron Man? Captain America. Well, oh, I don't know, both of them. Vision. I'm going to miss. I'm, I'm... <laughs> well, we think, I think Vision's coming back, man. He it's is. Insane, but still. Yeah, I, I'm. I am. I'm going to miss Captain America. So I am going to miss America's ass. Oh my god! Yeah, fuck yeah! I love. I love that bit. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this was this was a great conclusion, and this was a mighty big episode. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, and until next time, peace. Doses. <laughs>